Hi there, my name is Vic Beer. I'm an ENT surgeon working for the NHS in central London. And I've done two previous videos before this one about my time in New York just before Christmas. But two of the operations were cancelled in that week just before Christmas. And so I thought I had a little bit of time and I met someone else known as Dr. Green, who was very kind. I've put a picture of him somewhere here. Uh, Dr. Green was very, very nice. He talked me through an implant which is just now becoming available in the NHS, which is something I've been wanting to do for some time. Now this implant's called a Latera implant, and I guess it might be called pronounced differently in, in America, but I'm gonna call it Latera. Uh, and it's based on nasal obstruction. Now, uh, I'm just gonna break it down to make it slightly simplified so you understand how uh, nasal obstruction works. There are basically three different causes of nasal obstruction. The first is that this midline partition uh, called the septum may be deviated, so it might be like this. And so you can breathe through one side but not the other side because the whole thing is twisted or sometimes it does an S shape and both sides are blocked because the midline cartilage and bone are blocked, uh, are blocking the nose. And actually in most cases you need an operation to straighten up that midline partition known as a septoplasty. And once you can breathe right through the middle of that, um, it's equal on both sides rather than being completely blocked on one side rather than the other. So that's blockage type number one. Now there is a second type of blockage known as turbinate hypertrophy. So uh, you've got that midline structure called the septum and there are things called turbinates that come in like this and they look a little bit like blades. And there is a video, I'll, I'll stick the video up here where I actually scope myself so you can see my turbinates, which are ever so slightly enlarged, which caused me a little bit of obstruction, but I use a nasal spray to, to help me breathe through my nose. And these turbinates warm up and humidify the air that we breathe in. Now that's very, very useful, but sometimes people have allergies and they swell up and block the nose. So for example, um, you'll, you'll, everyone will know about turbinate hypertrophy because your nose swells up when you have a cold or a flu and you feel like you can't breathe or some people have hay fever and they can't breathe because that's because the turbinates have swollen up and blocked your breathing. Some people have a slightly lesser condition where they lie on one side, it blocks their breathing, they lie on the other side, then it come, moves it across to the other side. So Actually, I'm doing a video on nasal cycles some other time, but that's uh, reason number two for having nasal obstruction. Now, the third reason is uh, when the side walls of your nose collapse in. So uh, I've done videos on this about uh, nasal dilators. Again, I'll put a video up here for that. So nasal dilators stop your nose from collapsing in. So if you look at my nose, see that bit there, you'll see it going, you see it falls in, it collapses when I take a deep breath in, that's just part of my not very good nose. So my nose collapses in if I take a too deeper breath. Like if I do that, lots of people's noses come in, but nobody walks around going like this. But if that is a reason for your nasal obstruction, there are a couple of ways around it. There are nasal dilators, which are almost like a thing that prongs open your nose like this. So it's like a little cone shaped thing or, or a little uh, ring there that keeps the nose open like that. And you can also get things called breathe right strips, which is a bit of sticky plaster there that pings it out like that. And if you did this to yourself and sniffed in, you go, oh wow, I can breathe much better when someone does this or when someone does this. It looks <laughs> ridiculous. You wouldn't walk around all day like that. But if you can do this and you feel, oh my God, this feels so much better that way, that makes sense that you have a slight nasal wall collapse problem with your nasal obstruction. So those are the three reasons why people have nasal obstruction. And you could have all three. Uh, you can have big turbinates, uh, a twisted nose because of a previous fracture or you fell on your nose or something like that. And your nose could be collapsing in. You could have all three and you'll need all three fixed. Now I said, we're talking about the third one here, particularly with the collapsing of your nose. So I said the septoplasty is for the, the first one to straighten up your septum. You can use a spray for those turbinates or use an operation to shrink down the turbinates as long as you don't cause damage to them so much, you get something known as empty nose syndrome. Another video here for you about that. But the, the last one, the collapsing of the nose, that area here, when it collapses in, you can use nasal dilators, which hold it open like this or breathe right strips. Now, uh, you can, traditional uh, techniques is when you do an operation, which is called a septal rhinoplasty, functional septal rhinoplasty, where you move around the cartilages uh, inside your nose and sort of augment this area so it doesn't keep collapsing. And you put extra cartilage in these areas to, to keep it more rigid, to stop it from collapsing in. And they work very well. I, now, I don't do those operations because I don't like doing cosmetic operations at all. I, I've, as you can see, I've got enough on my plate. So I tend to refer those sorts of operations 
over to one of my patient, uh, one of my colleagues who does cosmetic type operations. I know it's not a cosmetic operation per se, uh, but we're doing a cosmetic operation for a functional result. But that's what I normally do. Now, the advantage of this Latera implant is that what it does is that it uh, you don't need to have a relatively big operation to, to stop this uh, thing from collapsing in. It's basically a strut that goes from here to here, so it stops it from falling in so easily. It hangs off this little bit of bone here. And I'll try and show some videos or pictures here um, so you can see exactly what I mean. So whilst the patient is asleep or awake, you put some local anaesthetic into the nose, then you insert the needle along the side of the nose up towards the bones which are close to the eye. Then all you have to do is press this green button to deliver the implant just where you want it to be, and this supports the side wall of the nose. So I hope those videos have helped you understand what the Latera sort of device is all about. Uh, and But if you're having a cosmetic operation anyway for the, the look of your nose as well as the function, well then you might as well have that operation anyway and uh, augment that area so you don't uh, so everything doesn't collapse down. But if you're only interested in improving the breathing of your nose, well this operation might be quite useful in amongst the other operations that you may need, the straightening of your nose or shrinking down of the turbinates. So it takes not very long, as I said, and it, and Dr. Green, who I should come back to him as well. So Dr. Green was very kind. He spoke to me for some time. We talked about this implant. He does uh, sometimes three or four of these implants per week, and he's been doing this for about six years. So he's done huge numbers of these things. And he finds them very, very useful. So it was really useful to talk to someone who uses it a lot, knows all the 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 good and the bad points of it. He said in some cases they're too long and you should shrink it down and knowing exactly where to put it, when to put it, uh, what patients would work best in, what the side effects and risks are, how long it takes. He said basically takes a couple of minutes on each side. It's it's a very very quick uh, and easy technique. The he also talked about the cosmetic result. It doesn't change the look of the nose at all. Uh, and because this implant, as I said before dissolves with time. It's not something that's stuck with you forever. It dissolves and causes a bit of scar tissue that holds the nose open. So uh, these sorts of things really appeal to me because it means I don't have to put someone through a very big operation to help them breathe through their nose. I can hopefully help them myself with this small implant. And now that it's made, been made available in the NHS, I hope uh, to be able to get this to be um, uh, ratified and used on the NHS soon so I can start giving it to my patients uh, for free on, on the NHS. So again, thank you very much, Dr. Green, for talking to me, walking me through this new technique, which hopefully will be coming to the NHS soon. And once it's available and it's working, uh, I'll show you, tell you about the results uh, in this uh, in on this channel and hopefully it'll be useful to you. Um, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.